Good afternoon all, CamelbackTrading.org coming to you this Friday afternoon. March 26th, we're looking at the SPY, Russell, and Triple Qs, ETFs, market profile here on Window Trader. And for a day that was rotational for a while, we even filled out gap. The last half hour of the day was just a bull run as they stampeded the bears. And hopefully, you stayed out of trouble on that. We made sure we told our room, do not, do not get short. If anything, you should be long on this run, not short, as the market just ripped up. Incredibly, SPY is only eight wide. We L missed uh, D's high by a couple of pennies or so, so we only end eight wide. So I have my price spike and then the day's low as my destinations. Russell does not probe. Triple Q's do. Um, they end 10 wide, uh, respectively. Incredible volume, 106 million. Uh, we went from down on the week to closing up on the week by about $7 or $6. All-time highs right in sight as anybody who's invested in this market <coughs> is just ringing the money. They're reading in the register as there's another standing ovation for the Bulls. As right now, there just hasn't been any selling now for just about a year. I had a good day today. Um, <laughs> I actually, well, we'll go to that in a minute. Let's go, let's go over the other ones first. We're going to go over all the charts also today. So the Russell, at one point today, after a very nice start to the day, with a gap higher, A's low was ex just about exactly at that weekly low we said that they got um, above and closed around last night. Came down and actually tested it in I, J, K, and L and then ripped higher and got above it also. Uh, they didn't have any single prints today. None of us had single prints, but we go out with a tremendous price spike in both the SPY and the, uh, and the Qs and ES. Um, we'll go over all the charts in a minute. I didn't do any trades in Russell, in uh, IWM or Q's today. Q's never gapped today. They never gapped. They uh, actually took out, by the way, all th three of us took out both sides of the IB. And we took out both our overnight high and overnight low also in the ES and SPY. So they are just violating everything one way or the other. It's absolutely amazing. Um, Triple Qs, go out with that probe. They're in balance in all three, uh, all three uh, time frames. We'll go over that. So SPY and ES, we gap higher. We almost fill it early in D. Don't fill it, only to fill it in J and K. Um, and that was all the sellers could do. Now let me go over my trades and one that I paper traded at the end of the day, but I have taken that trade in the past, and boy... Kind of sick to my stomach. I didn't take it today, but we'll go over that. So in A period, I took a long against the gap to 390 calls. We held the gap. The trade worked out. Same thing in B period. One time framing up, bought 391 calls. The trade this morning was nothing but longs. As we had a gap higher, we had higher value. We were one time framing up. D period, things changed. We didn't, couldn't hold single prints. D period came down. I actually took a short, not at the day's low, but I took a short as we were about to take out C's low, figuring we'd come into balance to 394 puts, and they worked out. I did it in E against our value high at the time. Uh, again, 394 puts. Now, G period, I was like, well, we made a new high in C, we made a new low in D, I'm gonna look to fade. G made a new high, took a small put, it wasn't going anywhere. I was, wasn't making, wasn't losing. Finally, it started going up towards the end of the time frame. I said, forget it, I'm out. I lost on the trade, but not a lot. And then my two touchdown trades. I period. We were having trouble getting to the highs. I'm like, well, these week longs are gonna get it, give it up. We're five wide, good chance we'll go down. So right before, right before, I actually innovated it. Before we stopped the one time framing uh, up, I took a 40 put play about five, six cents above H is low. 
and I broke H's low, boom, started, the floodgates started opening, started, took them off at visual areas, took it off at G's low, E's high, POC. Uh, you know, it, it turned out to be a very nice trade, took the rest off at the time towards, um, towards the opening. That was a great trade. Now, I was looking for a long, and I didn't take it. And then I'm glad I didn't take it because when Jay took out eyes low, I'm saying, well, now I'm, not look now I'm not looking for that afternoon pullback. The only long I will look for is if we make a new low and then do not um, go trend and we come back into the day's range. Well, that's exactly what happened in K. I bought, I bought it. Uh, didn't do it right away. K started coming back in. I bought a 10 lot of the 390, uh, 389, 389 calls. And then it came back into around Jay's low. Um, actually made a new low in K, right? K's low was our low of the day. And I bought an additional 30 calls. And then as, as soon as I did that, it just started pumping right back up. So, and it was a beautiful trade. So two really nice trades. Now the one I was talking about, and I have done this in the past and it's cost me. The 394 calls were trading at 13 cents. And I said to the room, I said, unless we get back into GH and I's high uh, range rather quickly, this thing is going to start. Even though we already probe, like if we get back in, then that that might be all they want to do. I said, but if they don't, they're going to start going, and they're going to go for those other two daily highs that we were talking about in the room at three ninety three forty six, three ninety four oh seven. And I was like, I've done this in the past. I bought a thousand calls at 13 cents. I've done that in the past and it's gone against me and I lost that. I didn't take the trade. Well, those calls went from 13 cents to over $2 bid. <laughs> so in the end, the risk reward 13,000 versus, you know, almost 200,000 would have been a hell of a trade. Now there's no way I would have held them for that long by any stretch, but regardless of where I started selling them, it would have been a beautiful trade. The thing that uh, kind of bothers me that I didn't do it is I've been in trades, not a thousand, but I've been in trades 100, 200, 400 calls a put to where I'm out, 10, 15, $20,000. And the risk is still a lot more than that. And I hold on to it because I'm stubborn or stupid. This one, again, I'm not saying that's a thing to do on a daily basis, but my risk was 13,000 and look what my reward would have been. Anyway. Shoulda, coulda, woulda, right? Let's go over destinations for Monday. 396.41. We have three destinations only to the upside. 396.41, today's high and weekly high. Then 398.12, weekly high, all-time high from the January 17th. And 398.25, my overnight high from, Jan uh, not January, March 17th. And then 398.25, my overnight all-time high at March 18th for the downside. Now remember, we close at 395 and change. First downside destination isn't to the price probe. 392.87 and then below that, I have nothing to today's low of 390.29 because I was only nine, uh, eight wide. I mean, will I totally ignore eight wide if we come back in? Of course not. But as far as my firm destination until we get more market generated information, it is not until today's low. And then 389.69, price probe from yesterday, which held nicely. We got into it, but we never got down to it. And then you should have the other downside destinations. Now, let's look at the charts. And we'll do all three indices. We'll start with the Russell. One time framing up, six months. Still extremely healthy. Weekly, pure balance. You could use a four week balance. You could use uh, from four weeks ago, that low 207.21, we got close to it, 208.03. Didn't get it, right? Balance rules, you almost get to the bottom of balance, gets rejected, the ultimate destination, the top of the balance. Now the fact that we got firmly back into March 8th high, uh, March 8th range, if we are able to take out this week's high, well, the other extreme will be the destination, which is the all-time high. Talk about a swing trade. And then on the daily, balance. Got back right around the, uh, 50, we're right around it. It's a three-day balance. 
Now, triple Qs is different. They're in balance in every time frame. Monthly, four month balance. Needs more MGI. Weekly, four week balance. You need more MGI. Daily, balance, same thing. Now what was very interesting about the NQ and Qs today, those FANG stocks are teetering at incredibly visual levels. Tesla at 600, Amazon 3000, Google 2000, uh, Netflix 500, Nvidia 500, Apple 120. Did Apple get above 120 on that run late in the day? Uh, yes it did. Those are incredible visual levels for the NASDAQ 100. So I think there's a good chance, and somebody said this in the room, good chance that SPY getting the 400 might hinge on whether those stocks hold those levels or not coming into the end of the quarter. And then let's go to SPY, NES. SPY, one time framing up on the monthly, five months, healthy, weekly, three week balance. We held that 381.42 low. We didn't get as close as Russell did on their weekly balance. We got to 383.90. Now the opposite end of the balance is our destination, which is the all-time high. We didn't get too far from it in the last half hour. And then on the daily, markets don't go bull bear, right? So we were down in the daily. This is still balanced to me. So now we can make it a nice. We took out, uh, oh, actually, Am I missing a daily, uh, a daily high of 396.72? You know what? I apologize. We might have one more daily high that I didn't transfer over on one of my sheets. We do. I apologize. So 396, I'm glad I looked at this. 396.41 is this week's high, but there is one more daily high before the all-time high. 396, I never put it in when I was doing... My homework from the other day. 396.72 is a daily high. So we are in a balance of, you can make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven day balance. You can use March 18th high of 396.72 and yesterday's low as the bottom of the balance. So again, about an $8, $9 balance. We had a pretty good week this week. Actually, we had a very good week this week in the trading room because it was not an easy week. We had single prints every which way, trend days every which way that kept getting violated. But between me guiding the room with play-by-play -play and having the profiles being streamed and the excellence that we have in the room with other traders' ideas and everything else, we kept the entire room from what I see and understand, and they all give me feedback, not only out of trouble, but to, they had very good weeks. Come check us out at camelbacktrading.org. Have a great weekend, and we'll speak prior to the opening on Monday.